Happy Sunday and happy Thanksgiving. I hope everybody was able to take some time on Thursday and reflect on the things that we're grateful for and thankful for in this life. Uh, I'm sure that many of us were not able to celebrate uh, in the ways that we're used to or the ways we would prefer. Um, but I think that it's in those times actually that it's more important for us to spend time and think about the things we're grateful for and the things that we continue to see God doing in our lives. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for your lives. I think those taking those times to, to reflect on, on the good things that we have, even when things are hard, is, is really important for our faith and to continue to see God moving 
uh, and all the situations we find ourselves in. Today we're going to be continuing our sermon series through the book of Hebrews called Election, and we're in chapter 11 uh, today, which I'm excited about. Uh, the plan for today, uh, just so you know, we're going to read the entirety of chapter 11 which uh, we don't normally do, but I think in particular, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 loses a lot of its effectiveness if, if you break it up into a lot of chunks. Certainly there's lots of references and stories that you can you know, chase down and do the cross-reference thing, but it's really the, the weight uh, of, of the number of, of great examples of faith, uh, like we'll see. Uh, so we'll read that all together. We're going to jump back to chapter 10 and then finish up in the first couple of verses of chapter 12. Uh, today as we talk about the faith of others. Let's read here in chapter 11. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned, about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, It is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead, and so in a manner of speaking he did receive Isaac back from death. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on top of his staff. By faith Joseph when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him from th- uh, for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt, because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the application of blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, and when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. And by faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, 
who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released, so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and, and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. What a collection of examples of faith. You know, here, even starting from verse 1, the author is talking about uh, that faith is confidence. And, you know, for the whole book of Hebrews that we've been going through together, the, the theme has been Christ is superior. But maybe the goal has been to be giving faith and confidence to the hearers, both the original audience, these persecuted Jewish Christians, uh, and us today. Have confidence in Jesus. Have confidence in God. And this example, uh, or I guess collection of examples, is really meant to do that, to give confidence. It really is this hall of fame of faith. Now, I, I think it is actually quite different from our other halls of fame, baseball, football, rock and roll, where the focus, I think, very much is on the people who are inducted into those halls of fame. This is what they have done. This is what they've given to the sport or whatever. Uh, compared to the Hall of Fame of Faith, where the focus really is on the hearer or the reader. The reason this is collected here, I mean, it is to celebrate the, the faith of these people, but only in the sense of inspiring those who are able to witness it. It is really for the audience. The audience is the focus of this Hall of Fame. Even in verse 40, the, the author says, together with us. Like, we are, are all in this together, whether it's the heroes of the Old Testament, our heroes of the New Testament, our present-day faith heroes, like we are all in this together. And the faith of others plays a, a very important role in our own pursuit of God, and our own pursuit of faith. Uh, in, in this context, in these couple of chapters, that, that sense is really that through the faith of others, the support and the encouragement that we get through that, we are able to persevere through really challenging times. And that's what the author is really saying to the original audience. Like, I, I know this time is really hard. And you can do hard things through faith. Look at what faith will get you. We can see these examples of Old Testament heroes and their faith. We really need the faith of others. Let's go back a chapter into chapter 10. Dana was preaching about this last week. Uh, and I wanted to touch on this part about uh, the faith of others uh, again. In verse 24, it says, Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. You know, having encouragement, having people, you know, in our lives uh, from a spiritual perspective, it isn't just about um, enjoyment, uh, this will make my pursuit of faith more enjoyable or easy to bear. It really is in the context of, well, what the author says here in verse 25. All the more as you see the day approaching. And my translation, day is capitalized. This is the day that Jesus comes back, the day that we stand before God. In that context, we really need each other. We need the faith of others. We need to be spurred on. We need to be encouraged. We need to have these faithful examples so that we can stand before God as those who do not shrink back. That's the end of chapter 10, right? That's that's the context of, of what we're talking about. And the consequences of, of not having these genuine, transparent relationships are really huge, right? That, that, those are the next couple of verses to, uh, from chapter 10, verse 26. The author is talking about this is what happens if if we start down this road and pursuing God and we see Jesus and know Jesus and somehow lose our way that we give up our race, the consequences are huge. That, that's the importance of needing those who are going to spur us on to keep us going in our 
race. Let me ask you, who, who do you have in your life that, that spurs you on towards love and good deeds? Who do you have that you are encouraging in their faith? Those should be some names that come to mind very quickly. These are the people who inspire me. These are the people who help me pursue Jesus. Here are the people that I'm trying to keep in my mind and considering how I can spur them on. Uh, if it takes any time at all, really, it, it means that there's a breakdown somewhere. Uh, it means that we haven't been considering that very often or that hasn't been playing a meaningful role in our lives recently. And something that I hear a lot when we talk about these kind of relationships, whether you call it a, a discipling partner or a discipler or uh, whatever you want to say, uh, what I hear often is, well, uh, this is the plan and I'm supposed to be getting with this person or uh, engage over here, but it hasn't been working out recently. The last couple of months have been a little bit off. And on the one hand, I understand how that happens uh, because life uh, gets crazy. There's lots of things going on. And it's easy to lose track of those things. On the other hand, the author says, and all the more as we see the day approaching. Right In the context of, of going to heaven, uh, we need to be more and more devoted to these relationships that are going to help us to get there. And we need to be more and more concerned with helping the people around us get there with us. Not over time that we become less and less concerned or as we get more and more mature in the faith that we need less and less check-ins. I don't know that that's a great way to think about this. And when we we're thinking about needing to uh, have this encouragement, this spurring, these other people who are helping us to get there, that we are fulfilling our roles in the body of Christ, like 1 Corinthians chapter 12, both that we need the body and the body needs us. In the context of heaven, we need to continue to all the more be devoted to that. You know, I uh, one of those relationships for me is certainly with Dana. I think recently there's two conversations in particular where I've felt uh, spurred on towards love and good deeds. The first one uh, was uh, on a Zoom call. We were having a, a mentoring time with the Perkins. And uh, of course, we're home and our kids are doing virtual school. And, you know, we were trying to do a call. My kids were doing some stuff and I needed to engage as a parent. Uh, so I took care of the situation and sat back down. And uh, Dana <laughs> says to me, hey, uh, can we talk about whatever that was? And we got to talk about me and my role as a dad. And I'm grateful for people who see my life like that. Uh, I'm grateful for the input to help me be a, a godly father. And the situation needed to be addressed. Uh, but I was definitely frustrated about what was going on in the background of our work call. Um, but I needed somebody to speak life and speak faith in, into me and my role as a dad. And Dana uh, and Jen was there as well. Uh, certainly helped me uh, to do that. The second conversation with Dana recently uh, was by phone. And I was just sharing with him. Man, I'm starting to feel really overwhelmed at all the things that are going on right now. Uh, this is um, after the Delos uh, had uh, departed. They've on to their next chapter in Texas. Uh, so we're a little short-staffed at the moment, and we're trying to cover all of our bases. And it's already been kind of a crazy year, trying to get up to speed with virtual church and uh, the pandemic and the political scene and the social justice stuff. And now being uh, short-staffed and trying to cover um, everything. I was starting to feel that. And uh, Dana said uh, two things to me that, that really made a huge difference in how I was facing the current situation. And he said, the first thing is uh, you need to be humble. Like four people are not going to do the work of six people. Like we're just not. And if we try, there are going to be large consequences to that, right? Uh, we need to be humble with our own limitations, uh, and that's hard for me and certainly not my default. My default is to, you know, rise to the occasion and, you know, stand in all of the gaps. Um, but there is also an arrogance to that, uh, that, that I don't want to accept my own limitations. Uh, the other thing that he had said to me was, uh, you need to have humility and you need to have faith. Like we can only give as much as we have. And in that moment, we need to trust that God is going to take care of his church. Like, this is God's church. It's not our church. 
So we give our loaves and our fish, we give as much as we have, and God does the rest. And we need to have faith in that. It's not at all about sitting on the, the Christian couch, eating our potato chips and saying, God will take care of it. That's, that's not what we're talking about. But I, I needed to hear that, both the, the embracing humility and to embrace faith. And uh, I, I'm really grateful uh, for that conversation. I'm grateful for Dana in my life. We, my weaknesses are Dana's strengths. And I, I need him in my life. And I, I know that as a church and as a church family and as a church movement, these kind of relationships are, are part of our stated values. But it's really easy for those relationships to break down if, we're, if we are not continuing to pursue having the faith of others in our life. You know, also this uh, context, Day with a capital D, uh, as we talk about revision uh, or just building the church in general, the context has to be the approaching day of Jesus, right? We can certainly talk about preferences and the things that we'd like to see in our own visions, uh, what we prefer for midweeks or small groups or whatever. But the context also always has to be of how is this going to get us to heaven? How, are, how is this going to help inspire our faith and spur us on towards love and good deeds? How is this going to help us to, to preach the gospel that other people can also go to heaven? When it starts getting into preferences and feelings and our own personal goals, I, I don't want to downplay those things at all. Our feelings are, are real and our preferences have a place. But we have to keep everything in the context of going to heaven. In uh, Matthew 23, Jesus, one of his criticisms of the Pharisees is that they strain out the gnat and swallow the camel. And when we're talking about building a church or trying to figure out what the South Sound Church of Christ is going to look like for the next 10 years, we have to keep all of that in the context of going to heaven. Otherwise, we can get into all sorts of discussions and hurt feelings or bitterness about the way things are or aren't being done. And in that sense, uh, we might strain out the gnat, but swallow the camel, where actually our faith is hurt because of the way that we're trying to build these things when we get too focused on these other parts. I'm not saying that we shouldn't uh, make sure that our needs are met. But our needs, when it is concerning us getting to heaven, is very different than our preferences. And even a lot of the work that we've been doing this year, talking about racial and cultural diversity and unity, all of us come from such different preferences and uh, life paradigms that as we build a church together, there's going to be a lot of meeting in the middle. But that's going to be a lot easier to do if we hold this day with a capital D as our goal. We are all trying to get to heaven. And at the end of the day, I don't really care if we do or don't meet on Wednesdays, if we sing this song or the other song, if our services are half an hour or two hours long. All of that, as long as we're meeting the goal of getting to heaven, all of the rest, we will sort it out. You know, we really need these relationships. We really need the faith of others so that we can stand before God on that day because we are for sure going to need the encouragement and the spurring on some point between here and there. That really is the point of, of chapter 11. We kind of have these two different kinds of relationships. The, the people that we can sit down with or we can uh, talk to via a screen or a phone or whatever. Uh, we have those people who are in our lives now. And we have these examples of faith that we might never have met uh, or no longer have the opportunity to meet this side of eternity. But we can still be inspired by their example and how they are calling us to run our race. Let's finish up here in chapter 12. In verse 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. You know, I think one of the, the hardest points of our pursuit of God and our life of faith are the times where we feel alone. And this year, 2020, with all of the isolation that, that's been going on, I can only imagine that this has been a year where, where it'd be much easier to feel alone than it usually is. I'm certainly grateful for all of the opportunities that we have uh, to stay connected through technology. 
and in that sense, I, I sort of have a, a love-hate relationship with Zoom. Uh, I, on the one hand, hand, if I never have another Zoom call for the rest of my life, I'll probably be fine. And on the other hand, I'm so grateful that we have this platform to be able to stay connected uh, with the rest of our church family. Uh, but, but the message of we are not alone it is so important both for us to be reaching out and continuing these relationships that we have with the people who are close to us in our church family, but also just the knowledge that we have this cloud of witnesses. This Hall of Fame of Faith in Hebrews chapter 11 is not only for the original audience, it's also for us. Like we also have this cloud of witnesses in 11 verse 40. It is together with them that God's plans are being fulfilled. It makes me think about this passage in 1 Kings chapter 19, when uh, Elijah says to God, you know, he's hiding in a cave and he says, uh, man, I'm the only one left. Like, you know, the, the evil rulers of this land have killed everyone and it's just me. And uh, God says to him, you know, I still have 7,000 faithful followers who have not bowed a knee to Baal. And just in the putting ourselves in that moment, this conflict of feeling alone in your pursuit, like how destructive and depressing and discouraging that can be. And for us in this time, in 2020, not that it's the same as, you know, being persecuted in, in the first century or, uh, you know, hiding in the cave somewhere, but it has the ability to make us feel alone in our faith. And I just, I, I want you to hear today that you are not alone. You have a cloud of faithful witnesses. You have a, a spiritual family around you that we are, are all running this race together. The faith of others won't finish this race for us. We still have to do all of the running. But I'll tell you, when you are running with people who are cheering you on and spurring you on, you have somebody you're running the race with, and you have all of these people, you, you can think about you know these marathon shots when you have all of the crowd lining the the track of people who are cheering and offering encouragement or water or whatever, you know, you only have a little bit further to go. The race becomes very different and much easier to run with that kind of support from the faith of others. Stay safe. Keep the faith. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 I want to see you. Open the eyes. 
eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Oh, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. To see you high and lifted up, you're shining in the light of your glory. Lord, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy. for joining us this morning for worship. We hope there's something that has prepared you spiritually for the week to come. Please continue to follow us online. You can get to our website, southsoundcoc.org, or find us on Facebook or Instagram. If you're new or you found us recently, we would love for you to go and find our next steps button on our website so we can get to know you a little better and hear how we can serve you, certainly in this time. For all of our members or anybody who wants to give financially, please go to the website and click on the Give button. This will take you to the Tithely app so we can continue to be faithful in our giving in this time. If you missed our 930 Kids program, you can find it on our website in the Virtual Kids Corner. And be sure to tune in next week at 930 for another Kids program. If you are essential personnel or you're experiencing hardships because of the coronavirus, please let us know so we can continue to pray and support everybody. Until next week, stay safe and keep the faith.